Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, um, given all the minorities who are in music and in athletics and who don't have <clears throat> access to good advice before they sign contracts, I really feel an obligation to offer some advice here online <clears throat> to try to help those performers save some money and uh, advance themselves financially. Now, in the late 1980s, <clears throat> I used to work at a Beverly Hills entertainment law firm, Cooper, Epstein & Hurwitz, which was big in the music industry at that time. I've seen my share of entertainment contracts, right? Now, let me just say, I understand that there's an illusion in those contracts of big money and unlimited futures, right? But I want <clears throat> any young people watching this video, especially those who have been approached by different groups and are about to sign contracts with them, right? Managerial contracts, promotional contracts. <clears throat> I want them to heed the advice of NFL Hall of Famer Deion Sanders, who at one point was heavily recruited as an athlete. And he had some great advice for young people in exactly that situation. He said, what you need to understand <clears throat> is that the free shoes that you're getting, you're paying for those, right? Those are advances that are being given to you <clears throat> that will be taken out of your end of the bargain at a later date. Now yesterday I made a video that pointed out that many boxers have filed for bankruptcy, right? Um, this is part of my effort to just get out the information that, you know, boxing has a dark side. I'm a big fan of boxing, but understand there is a financial component to boxing. And, um, you know, many of these athletes really need some sound advice. I pointed out that Victor Ortiz filed for bankruptcy. I pointed out that Hank Lundy <clears throat> filed for bankruptcy and is involved in a lawsuit arising out of a contract that may have been nullified during that bankruptcy action. Well, this morning I'm still shaken up. Because uh, in the news is a lawsuit <clears throat> involving a platinum-selling hip-hop artist, right? He's one of my favorites. I'm, I'm into hip-hop, have been for 30-odd years, right? There's a well-known hip-hop artist who right now is being mentioned in a meaningful lawsuit. And if you read through the court papers, they're available online. I'm not going to say the artist's name. They're available online. You're going to see <clears throat> that this artist, despite selling millions of records, may not have been compensated. Right? I mean, may not have received any meaningful money. Right? There is a letter involved in the court pleadings from his attorney pointing out that they're still trying to get paid. Now, let me just give some quick advice. <clears throat> How you structure a deal is everything. If you're a young fighter, you need to figure all of this out. You don't want to get an advance, right? If you want money up front, 
it can't be as an advance because all an advance is is a loan right you actually owe the advance to the person giving you the advance legally they're not giving you anything right they're loaning you money rather if you want money up front and understand money up front is always a good idea right you want to be paid and you want to be paid as soon as possible if you want money up front make sure that the contract doesn't refer to it as an advance that money up front should be a signing bonus right the distinction is paramount because if you get a signing bonus and if the contract clearly states that that bonus is yours period right regardless of what happens in the deal then if the deal doesn't work out for whatever reason possible and keep in mind, sometimes the athlete can be a superstar and the deal doesn't work out because, of course, the group he's contracted with might be undercapitalized, right? Might not be able to pull off the event. We see all the time in boxing, promotions fall apart, get canceled, injuries happen world events happen right um, storms happen that lead to uh, cancellations my point is simply if you're the performer you want to get as much money as you can up front free and clear you don't want to be beholden to paying the money back Right? If your contract talks about you getting advances, then what that means is by signing the contract, you've put yourself in debt. Right, If you have any leverage whatsoever, if your lawyer has an inkling of how to structure the deal so that you're able to benefit the most, then what that lawyer should do is to make sure that that signing bonus is yours free and clear. Don't get me wrong, you're still gonna owe the other side your performance. Let's say the performance calls for three events, right? You still owe the other side to three events. But the point is that that initial money that you get up front should be yours free and clear. It sounds simple enough. But trust me when I say that you have multi-million dollar athletes out there, uh, multi-million dollar entertainment performers out there who are scratching their heads and are wondering how they got in debt by signing their contract. Let me make another point. And this is also a point often overlooked, but you need to make sure you don't make this mistake. You know, the contract has to be non-assignable. In other words, obviously, if I sign a contract with a major athlete, if I were to sign a contract with Victor Ortiz, right, um, Victor Ortiz would owe me the performance. In other words, um, if I'm a promoter and I sign Victor Ortiz, I'm expecting Victor Ortiz to show up fight night to fight. I'm not expecting to hear from Victor that he has assigned the contract to a lesser fighter who doesn't have the box office appeal who's not going to give me the quality of performance right now that's a no-brainer but understand it should work the other way too if victor ortiz signs with a promotional group or a managerial group and let's say he outperforms the contract he's better than advertised right he needs to know who he's working with. That promotional group and managerial group should not be able to transfer the contract to some new party that Victor Ortiz doesn't know 
and isn't comfortable with and may not be able to trust, right? There again, you know, the athlete needs to have the option of terminating the contract. In other words, the contract should be non-assignable and, you know, the athlete or the performer should be able to have the right to waive that clause if all the stars align, right? Let's say Victor Ortiz is with top rank. Let's say top ranks wants to assign the contract, transfer the contract to Golden Boy. And let's say Victor Ortiz likes the people at Golden Boy, right? And he understands that they're both, you know, heavy hitters in the industry. It should be Victor Ortiz's decision on whether to allow that transaction to happen, right? It shouldn't be anyone else's because the contract involves Victor Ortiz's talents, right? We can talk about a whole host of other issues. I'm not going to lose my crowd by getting too much into legalese. But all I can say is if you're in a hip hop, what I want you to do is to just do a few Googles on um, recent contracts filed involving multi-million dollar uh, platinum selling hip-hop artists there aren't that many right and you may come across the court filing I did let me just say it's a heartbreaker just like in boxing you need to look beyond the image you need to look beyond all the bling and you need to ask yourself in that business who exactly is making the money is it the artist is the artist wearing the rolex in the video is he actually the one who's making the lion's share of the money or is he a guy living on a block someplace in beverly hills with a heavy mortgage that might actually be bigger than the house he's in and that you know a home purchase furnished by an advance he received that he actually owes the group that gave him the advance right in many ways a lot of these entertainment ventures are houses of mirrors let me hear from you leave your comments for me here online I'm just getting this video out there. I hope in a year, two years, three years, some young person who's about to sign a contract stumbles upon it and then thinks to themselves, you know what? I don't like this word advance in this agreement. Let's talk about making this a non-refundable signing bonus. If the other side hits you with nonsense about, hey, well, if we give you money, how do we know you're going to perform? You can compensate for that with other provisions in the agreement where you can have penalty provisions, liquidated damages provisions for the legally savvy in case of breach. Right. Let me also point out, too, that if you're an artist, again, I don't want to get too legal here, but if you're an artist, consider having a liquidated damages provision in your agreement because the problem with being an artist is you start making a lot of money, you start rising on the way up, you start getting revenue from a lot of different venues, right? Your live performances, your tape performances, and stuff like that. And then someone's going to jump out of the bushes. And they're going to claim that they're owed a portion of all of your revenue. So what you want to do is have a liquidated damages provision. That actually is a preset penalty for a material breach of the contract. Right. And so this way, you know, let's say there is a breach of the contract. You can then say, OK, well, under my liquidated damages provision, you're owed ten thousand dollars. Right. That'll save you ooh, far more than that in attorney's fees litigating this thing. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for us here online. Visit me at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.